So in this video, I want to continue talking about the method of undetermined coefficients, and I'd like to go over an example that we've done before, and the, the, the form of it has been covered a long time ago. We did this when we did first order equations. Um, but it's, it's instructive because it does also satisfy the structure of the equations we're working on now. It's just that there's a coefficient in front of the y double prime that's zero. So what you see is a y prime plus, sorry, y prime minus y equal e to the t. So um, we could use integrating factors to solve this. And as an exercise, I encourage you to do that. But if you go through that, you'll find that you get y equal t e to the t plus c e to the t. And that c came from an antiderivative step. Um, and, so, uh, and so did the t. And you'll have to go through that to see where they come from. But once you go through that, you'll see that um, the structure you get out of the resulting solution is this is something I talked about uh, earlier in the term. And it, um, it relates to this picture here, which shows how we take the particular solution and add an entire family of functions to it that's very much like taking the purple vector in the plane or in, the, in 3D and adding a line, that green line, it, to capture one direction of that solution plane we had. So, uh, so the key observation, though, is I have an e to the t and a t e to the t. So what's going on there? What happened? If I treat this as, uh, like, I, like I've been treating a second order equation, I can make the ansatz that the solution y is equal to e to the rt, and I'll get an equation r minus 1 equals 0 for the homogeneous equation, and that just says that r is equal to 1, so y is equal to e to the t. And so um, what this suggests is that I have a problem. So this is uh, so this is a general solution to the homogeneous equation, c e to the t. And what this suggests is that when I then plug in an e to the t on the other side, I can't use the method of undetermined coefficients because if I plug a e to the t into the equation, I just get zero. And so what this suggests is that there's another solution that works as a particular solution here, and that is t e to the t. So what I'd like to do is go through an example where we see that being a useful guess method for guessing at the structure of the solution. So let's look at y double prime minus 4y equal e to the 2t. And we get uh, the solution. So first, again, step one, we're looking for yh, the homogeneous um, solution of the homogeneous equation. So we get r squared minus 4 equals 0. And that gives us that r is equal to plus and minus and so the homogeneous solution, yh of t, is equal to c1 e to the 2t plus c2 e to the minus 2t. That's the homogeneous. And now you can see that the right-hand side, e to the 2t, is actually part of the homogeneous solution. So if I just guessed naively, based on the rule that we, we've looked at already, the method of undetermined coefficients, uh, if I just guess that the yp is e to the 2t, when I plug this into the equation, if I do y double prime, well, let's just write it down. So if I take two derivatives of that, I get 4a e to the 2t. And then I subtract 4 times a e to the 2t, I get 0. There's no way of choosing a so that I can make that equal to e to the 2t. Impossible. So I'm missing something, and what I'm missing is the fact that I should have used this idea from the example here of guessing that a is, sorry, that y p of t should be t e to the 2t. And what this does, if you do enough of these problems, you'll see the structure of why this works. But let me just go through it for now and show you that it works. So first I'm going to take one derivative, and I get a, take a derivative of the t, leave the e to the 2t alone, plus a t, derivative of e to the 2t, and I put a 2 out in front. And then if I take another derivative of this, I get 2a e to the 2t, that's the derivative of the first term, plus, and now I'm going to take a derivative with respect to the t, and I get 2a e to the 2t, 
plus, and now I'm going to have a chain rule on that e to the 2t, so I'll have 4a, leave the 2 of t alone, and I've taken the derivative with respect to e to the 2t. So now I have this as 4a e to the 2t plus 4a t e to the 2t. So when I plug that into my equation down here, y double prime p minus 4yp, I get this expression right here with no coefficient, and then subtract 4 times this one. So I get 4a e to the 2t plus 4a t e to the 2t. That's y double prime minus 4a t e to the 2t. And you'll notice this is a, a key feature of why this method works. If I look at all the terms that have a t e to the 2t, that's this one here and this one here, this one came from two derivatives of yp. And this one came from the minus 4yp. And they're exactly the same value. They cancel. And they cancel because where was I taking the derivatives? I was ignoring the t for both of these pieces. And I was taking the derivative with respect to the e to the 2t. And so that's essentially plugging e to the 2t into the uh, operator. And that's why they zero out. But I still, because there's that the derivative I took with respect to t left me with this term here. And so I want to make that equal to 1 times e to the 2t. And so that means I have to choose a equal 1 over 4. So my y of t for this problem is going to be c1 e to the 2t plus c2 e to the minus 2t plus 1 over 4 e Oops, sorry, t e to the 2t. And so that is the method for using the method of undetermined coefficients when the right-hand side is a solution to the homogeneous equation.